Okay, in this data resource, we're looking at whether uh, genetically modified tomatoes that have been modified so they don't produce pectinase, um, see if that affects uh, ripening of the tomatoes, if it um, affects how quickly they soften. And linking to that, if they don't produce pectinase, we've got on here that pectinase is an enzyme that breaks down pectin. So does something to do with breaking down pectin, is that responsible for ripening? Looking at resource A, we can see that what they're doing, so they're putting a 500 gram mass, which is a control variable, it's the same each time, it allows comparison because it would affect uh, the amount that they were flattened. Um, and then time after harvest, so whether they've been harvested, does that also affect how much they're flattened? So comparing normal GM tomatoes um, with this. So question one, what conclusions can you make from, figure, from this uh, graph? So both of them flatten more as the time after harvesting increases and you would expect that because hopefully you know that um, as they get older they're going to get riper so they're going to be squashier okay so we can see that on here as time goes on this goes up slightly this one goes up as well so both flatten more as time after harvesting increases from day seven onwards so you can see here this is the day seven point after this point, you've got uh, significantly flat and less with the GM. So these significantly flat and less because the standard deviation bars do not overlap. Um, up to day three, there is not a significant difference because the standard deviations overlap. Next question was, was it important to start off with your tomatoes being the same size? Yes, it was. Again, it allows comparison. It's a control variable, allows comparison. Look at what it's affecting. So we, we're measuring the, the thickness or the, how much it's been flattened. So if you had different sized tomatoes to start off with, the size affects the thickness after being squashed. If you've got a big tomato and you squash it, it's going to be thicker than if you had a smaller tomato and you squashed it. So that's comparison because size can affect the thickness after being squashed. Question three, identify a control variable, why it's important. So the 500 gram mass, um, and this is important because it allows comparison because changing this would affect the thickness after being squashed. The next data task looks at the um, how active pectin is, the enzyme is that breaks down pectin after um, with the same scale on the bottom time after harvesting in days. And you can see, as you'd expect, that the GM tomatoes, there's not much pectinase activity because they've been genetically modified and not to have pectinase. And we can see that normal tomatoes, uh, up to day three, no activity, and then after day three, we have a rapid increase in the amount of pectinase. So compare and contrast the two curves, both have no activity for the first three days. After three days, the normal have a lot more pectinase activity, whereas the GM only increases slightly after 12 days. So much higher pectinase activity in the normal after three days. Okay, the next data task asks you to use figure four and five, so the last two graphs, to see if there's any evidence to show that pectinase causes tomatoes to ripen. Well, if you were to do pectinase activity against the amount that the tomatoes flattened, the graph might look something like this. Okay, um, you can so the yes point, we got positive correlation that as pectinase activity increases, the amount flattened uh, also increases. The obvious then no points that would go with this correlation does not mean causation, could be due to another factor. Also, if you look at the graph on here, there's no standard deviation bars, so we don't know if the difference in pectinase activity is significant between each time period or between GM. There's also no, st no statistical test use, so we cannot see if the correlation between pectinase activity and the amount that the tomato is flattened is significant, so there's no correlation coefficient used. Another thing that you might have spotted is that up to 12 days there's no pectinase activity in GM, but if you look at the other graph, after three days there is a slight increase in the amount that the tomatoes are flattened, suggesting that it's not just pectinase that's causing the effect of ripening. Looking at this graph, this this table, so we're looking at so this time the normal and the GM tomatoes were placed in uh, distilled water, the water potential of zero, the highest possible, and salt solution with a lower water potential. And we can see that um, when you look at the fresh mass, the normal tomatoes lose mass when placed in salt, and the GM tomatoes also lose mass when placed in salt. But for dry mass, so that's the, the, all the water's been extracted, 
Right, okay, so to the question. Uh, what conclusions can you make? So, first of all, GM have a lower fresh mass than normal. You can see here that's a lower number than, than that one. Watering and salt solution lowers the fresh mass than both GM and normal. And we can see that there. And lastly, there's a similar dry mass for GM and normal with both types of watering. So all these numbers are similar. The next question was explain the difference in results. What we've got here, so really why, why do these drop? And if you to sort of draw it out, if you've got tomato and it's placed in salt solution, a salt solution would have a lower water potential than inside the tomato. So water is going to leave the tomato by osmosis. And because water has mass, it would lose mass. So, so far we've looked at um, whether GM affects ripening and whether placing a salt solution in, um, affects the mass of the tomato. But more, perhaps more importantly to, uh, is, is, is the taste. So what we've got here, so what we've got here is um, data where we can see that if you just compare the two GM plants with each other, when watered with salt solution, it improves the taste. However, it's actually lower than the, the, the normal taste score. Also, if you notice, if you add up how many different types of tomato we use, there's 14 tomatoes used here. 14 tomatoes, 14 tomatoes. So that's a small sample size. It's not representative. So let's uh, evaluate. Watering GM tomatoes with salt solution improves the taste. The mark scheme is really comparing these two. So you've got GM tomatoes and GM tomatoes with salt. So the agree point would be the mean is higher. Disagree points would be you've got a small sample size, so it's not representative. There's also no standard deviation bar, so we cannot see if that difference is significant. We can't see if this is a significantly higher taste score. I would also say that an, an against point would be it's lower than the normal tomatoes. But an important point to make is taste. It's a subjective score. It's not quantitative. So can you really compare the results?